Hi, and welcome to this first video for College Algebra. Now, the first chapter in the book is not chapter one, it's actually chapter P, as in prerequisites, because it's about some of the things that you should already be familiar with coming into the course. And we are going to spend a little more time on some of the things in that chapter, but in this video here today, I'm just going to go very quickly through some of the things in P1 and P3 that you should already know, you should already be familiar with. I'm just refreshing your memory. And then if there's anything that I show you in this video that you're not familiar with, that you don't completely remember and understand and have a grasp on, then you should go back and look in those sections of the book and try to bring yourself up to speed, figure out what's going on, ask me questions if you need to, turn to additional resources like the, the videos on the book's website if you need to. But I'm hoping that this will already be just a quick review and reminder of stuff you already know coming in. So section P1 is called Review of Real Numbers and Their Properties. And if you look at this section in the book, you will find a bunch of, well, boxes kind of like this, listing a bunch of basic rules of algebra and numbers and how they work and all that. So you should be familiar with all of these properties. Not necessarily with the names of them all, although I might mention those names as we go along, like we can do this because of the commutative property of addition or whatever. But you should at least know that all of these things are true. Notice the, the name of the property is given here. The property itself in symbols is shown here. And then there's an example over here. So the commutative property of addition says that a plus b equals b plus a. Here the a and the b stand for any two real numbers or any two expressions that stand for real numbers. And one example of this rule in action would be that 4x plus x squared is equal to x squared plus 4x. We have properties of negation and equality. We have properties of zero, things that are true when you're working with zero. We have properties and operations of fractions. So make sure you look over these really briefly and make sure they're things that you do know that, yeah, that's true. And just some, some terminology that you should be familiar with. The terms of an algebraic expression are the things that get added together to make up that expression. So in the expression x squared minus 5x plus 8, the terms are x squared and negative 5x, notice the minus is part of the term, and 8. So those three things added together make up that expression. The x squared and the negative 5x are variable terms because they involve the variable x. And the 8 is a constant term because it's just a number, just a constant. And when you have a variable term, the numerical factor is called the coefficient of that term. So the coefficient of negative 5x is the number negative 5. And the coefficient of x squared is 1. It's not written as 1 times x squared, but that's what the multiplier is. When it's just plain old x squared, that does mean 1 times x squared, so the coefficient is 1. And now for section P3, polynomials and special products. Main thing I want to quickly run through here is how multiplication of polynomials works. To find the product of two polynomials, that is to multiply them together, that involves the distributive properties, and they essentially tell you that you have to take each term of the first polynomial times each term of the second polynomial. So in the example here, 
the 3x is going to get multiplied by both the 5x and the 7, and the negative 2 is going to get multiplied by both the 5x and the 7. So you end up with 3x times 5x, which is 15x squared, plus 3x times 7, which is 21x, plus the negative 2 times the 5x, which is minus 10x, and the negative 2 times the positive 7 is minus 14. And then these two in the middle can be combined because they're both x terms. So the final answer simplifies to 15x squared plus 11x minus 14. Now in this particular example, the two polynomials that we were multiplying together were both binomials. They both had two terms each. And that's a fairly common situation. And the easy way to keep track of what all has to get multiplied when you have that kind of a situation, binomial times binomial, is what's often referred to as the FOIL method. FOIL, F-O-I-L, stands for first, and then outer or outside, and then inner or inside, and then last. So that reminds you that you have to multiply together the first terms of the binomials, and the outer terms get multiplied together, and the inner terms get multiplied together, and the last terms get multiplied together. So hopefully you have enough experience with this that you can go directly from this to this. You can look at something like 3x minus 2 times 5x plus 7 and multiply it out and immediately say, oh yeah, that's 15x squared plus 21x minus 10x is 11x minus 14. Some special products to watch out for are listed in this box here. And now here are some examples. 4x squared minus 5 times 3x squared plus 10. And by the way, in any of these examples, if you want to pause the video and try working it out yourself before I show you what the answer is, that would be a great thing to do. So hopefully I'm showing you things that you already know how to do. But if you really do think you know how to do them, try actually doing them before I show you the answer. So anyway, if I do the FOIL method on this, the F part of FOIL, the thing we get first, is 12x to the fourth. 4 times 3 is 12, and x squared times x squared is x times x times x times x. It's x to the fourth. Outside, we have 40x squared. Inside, we have minus 15x squared, and those are going to be combined. And then last, we have minus 50. So when I combine those middle terms, we end up with 12x to the fourth plus 25x squared minus 50. Now, if you can immediately go from this to this without writing out the middle step, that's great. I showed you the middle step just to make it real clear what was going on. What about this one? 7y minus 2 times 7y plus 2. Okay, if we do the FOIL method on this, we get 49y squared plus 14y minus 14y minus 4. And combining those middle terms, well, one's positive, one's negative, they kill each other off, they add up to 0, and we end up with 49y squared minus 4. Now, this is one of those special patterns that you want to watch out for, it's a sum and difference of, well, the, the two terms are the same except, or the two factors are the same, except that one of them has a plus and one of them has a minus, and when we multiply those out, we get just the first thing squared minus the second thing squared, because the O part and the I part of the FOIL method just cancel each other out. What about 5w minus 9 squared? First of all, this is not 25w squared minus 81. You cannot just distribute the squaring, the exponent, over the subtraction. 5w minus 9 squared means we're taking this 5w minus 9 times itself. We're multiplying two of those things together. 5w minus 9 times 5w minus 9. 
And we could just multiply that out with the FOIL method. And we would get 25W squared minus 45W for the outside minus another 45W on the inside plus 81. Remember, a minus times a minus is a plus. Combine the like terms in the middle and we get 25W squared minus 90W plus 81. Now, this is another one of those special patterns to watch out for. It's a square of a binomial. In this case, it's something minus something else, and then the whole thing is squared. So when you have something like that and you multiply it out, you get the first thing squared minus 2 times the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared. If this had been a plus instead of a minus, same pattern, but this would be a plus. So if we just use this pattern, this formula, to multiply this out, it tells us to take the first thing, 5w, and square that. Then in the middle, minus 2 times the 5w times the 9. And then at the end, plus the 9 squared. So that does give us 25w squared minus 2 times 5 is 10 times 9 is 90, W plus 81. How about this one? 3x times x minus 2 times x minus 8. There are three things multiplied together here. And we can multiply in whatever order seems most convenient. So one way to do this would be to start with 3x times x minus 2, which gives you 3x squared minus 6x. And then we can take that times x minus 8 with the FOIL method. 3x cubed minus 24x squared minus 6x squared plus 48x, which simplifies to 3x cubed minus 30x squared plus 48x. Or, if you think it's easier, we could start by multiplying these last two terms together. So we can multiply out x minus 2 times x minus 8 and get x squared minus 10x from the minus 8x minus 2x plus 16, and then multiply that through by 3x to get 3x cubed minus 30x squared plus 48x. Same final answer either way. And how about this? x plus 5 cubed, which means x plus 5, times x plus 5, times x plus 5. This many of these multiplied together. And we could multiply it out just by doing x plus 5 times x plus 5, and then taking whatever that is and multiplying that by this last x plus 5. Or this was one of those special patterns or formulas, the cube of a binomial. So here's a binomial, x plus 5, and it is being cubed. It's being raised to the third power. So here's the pattern that tells us what we end up with. The u and the v just stand for whatever the terms of this binomial are. In this example, the part of u is being played by x, and the part of v is being played by the number 5. And so this is telling us that when we multiply this out, we get the u, which is x, to the third power, plus we get 3 times the u squared times the v, so 3x squared times 5 plus the 3 times the u times the v squared, so 3 times x times 5 squared, plus the v, which is 5 cubed. So that's x cubed plus 3 times 5 is 15x squared, plus 3 times 25 would be 75x, plus 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5, is 125. Okay, so I hope you we're familiar with all that. If there's anything you have questions on, ask me and or go back and look in that section of the book or find other resources that help you get up to speed. And that's it for this video. See you in the next one or in class.